Souffle. My name's Paul Somerset. I own Ono Sushi in San Diego. Um, my website is The Anarchist Chef. I am The Anarchist Chef. We put together some of my favorite recipes from uh, my childhood in Hawaii. We're going to do a hoisin barbecue beef rib. We're going to do a traditional beef rib. We're going to do a huli huli chicken wing. Um, we're going to grill a bunch of vegetables on it and we have a special treat for dessert. It's a pineapple upside down cake. We're going to cook it in a cast iron skillet right on the grill. And now, I am... Ready to cook! We cooked the huli huli chicken in a pan on the grill because I wanted to make sure that the chicken was cooked all the way through and since there's a fair amount of brown sugar in the recipe it caramelizes and I didn't want it to get brown and burned on the grill before it was cooked all the way through so we started it in a large wok tossed it a couple times made sure the meat was about three quarters cooked and then finished it on the grill the basic premise of huli huli chicken is that you start with soy sauce, water, and brown sugar, much like a shoyu chicken. It's a marinade, it's not a barbecue sauce. So you marinate the chicken overnight for at least 24 hours. Um, to the soy sauce, the water, and the brown sugar, you add sambal olek, the chili paste, and ketchup and pineapple puree. You can, add, you can add as much or as little, and you can vary the flavors, whether you want it sweeter or spicier, or however you prefer. When you set out to barbecue, I think it's important to kind of look at your meat. What, what meat are you going to use? What sauce are you going to choose to go with the meat? We got a beautiful case of beef ribs. Not my favorite thing to barbecue, but we got a really good deal on a beautiful case of beef ribs. It's not my favorite thing to barbecue because they tend to be tougher. They have a large piece of silver skin on the back, which pretty much binds all the meat together. And that's what you have to make sure is tender and is pulling away from the bone. So we bake them. We bake them in the oven probably three or four hours before, before we started barbecuing. When they were about three quarters cooked, that silver skin had started peeling away from the bone. The bones were a rich, deep color, just like starting out a veal stock, the, bo the bones were getting well roasted and the meat was starting to cook three quarters almost almost all the way through. We pulled them out at that point and we adjusted the flavor a little and when I mean adjusted the flavor we sauced them a little bit, let them marinate overnight, we put some salt and pepper on them, and olive oil for the for the uh, tomato based sauce, the sesame oil for the hoisin based sauce, which leads me to kind of basic vinegar sauces. I have several recipes my basic barbecue sauces are a tomato-based sauce, a vinegar-based sauce, and a mustard-based sauce. My traditional tomato-based sauce is tomato sauce, tomato paste, vinegar, olive oil, brown sugar, garlic, onions, Worcestershire sauce, dry mustard, and cayenne pepper. And once again, you can vary these in any amount that you want depending on your own personal tastes. Then we get into our Asian barbecue uh, flavors, which I'm doing today. I'm doing one of my hoisin bar uh, barbecue sauce recipes, which I, I really enjoy. It's, it's, um, the flavors go really well with brown sugar, which is just a base ingredient of all your barbecue sauces. And my hoisin sauce, my hoisin barbecue, starts with hoisin sauce. And then to that, we're going to add brown sugar, sesame oil, soy sauce, water, lemongrass, ginger, garlic, and a sancho pepper, which is a, it's a more delicate Japanese pepper. The hoisin sauce tends to be very thick, and it tends to be a bit of an overpowering flavor. So I like to water that down. I cut it with about a third water, and then I'll add a good amount of brown sugar to that. So if I'm using the big number five can of, of hoisin sauce, I usually use about two miso bowls full of brown sugar about two cups. A uh, miso bowl is about eight ounces. Um, I'll add about a cup of sesame oil. I'll add about a cup of soy sauce, a cup of water, lemon juice, uh, I'm sorry, lemongrass, ginger, garlic, and sancho pepper to that. We wanted to saute uh, or grill a bunch of vegetables on the grill. So we started with asparagus, um, zucchini, and assorted vegetables, which we just marinated in olive oil and salt and pepper which is my favorite way to do vegetables. It's just a simple 
add a little flavor, add a little crispness and a little flavor to the vegetables. We're gonna do the pineapple upside down cake on the grill. The ingredients are really simple. I'm using a pre-mix for, uh, for cornbread that I've made up here. It's just cornmeal and flour. And the ingredients there ready to go. We got brown sugar and butter. We're gonna start those in the pan. We're gonna add the egg and the oil and the water to that. And we are gonna saute the pineapple rings in the pan and then add the batter over the top. Let's see if it works. We're going to close that and let it uh, saute for just a little bit. Then we're going to add the dough over the top, close it again, and let it cook for about 20 minutes. The food we did today is uh, uh, grilled asparagus and grilled zucchini. Did a huli huli chicken, which is uh, just my favorite recipe from when I was a kid. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you know what it is. We got a mix of ribs. We got a traditional barbecue, which is just like red wine vinegar and tomato paste. And then we have a hoisin barbecue rib. Simple salad with the passion fruit vinaigrette, and we have macaroni salad because you got to have macaroni salad in Hawaii. So this is the pineapple upside down cake with the cornbread. We're gonna flip it out of the pan, see if it works. That's for you, Bobby Flay. Pineapple upside down cake off the grill. Cheers. My name is Paul Somerset. I own Ono Sushi in San Diego, and I am the Anarchist Chef. The Anarchist Chef is funny. It's a term that some of my friends coined just lately because I'm, I'm, I, I'm a nonconformist by nature. So I like to, you know, I'm a gay sushi chef. I'm a skydiver base jumper. You know, I just, I don't really fit into a, into a niche. So my friends just started calling me the Anarchist Chef started a website, anarchistchef.com, and it's been fun. I grew up in Hawaii. Um, it's a really good place to grow up. I grew up on the beach in Hawaii, and I have fantastic memories of that. You know, it's funny, that's, that's, what, that's what Hawaii is about. It's about really simple food done well, and um, that's, that's what I believe in. I've cooked high-end food all over the world, and I've cooked with really high-end people, but my, still my favorite food is barbecue, and I'm serious, I'm not just saying that. I mean, I like a weekend barbecue with friends, and you take normal barbecue fare, and you just throw a little bit extra at it, you know? You take some really fresh ingredients, you come up with some creative sauces, a lot of sugar, that kind of stuff, it's great. Bobby Flay, I am Paul Somerset, the Anarchy Chef. You saw me high in the sky cooking for a whole bunch of people, but this is the other me. Home alone, sitting here quietly, koi pond, barbecue, Buddha statue. I hope I'm what you're looking for. I'd love the opportunity to cook with you.